What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 22 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Carl Franz campaign. Well, as we saw last time, Carl has taken Grom Peaked and destroyed a giant pile of uh, the uh, Red Eye Orcs and, well, primarily Gobos in the process in a pretty I nice battle that uh, sort of echoed a uh, encampment battle, as it were. Now it looks like these guys are out here stuck between Ungrim, though if he doesn't move first, we may want to get out of the Make settlement so that they can't siege and force Carl France. to take unnecessary attrition. Attack. In fact, what we could do is take Nude and have him trade the Hammer of the Witches for this one mortar. Like so. There we go. Now Carl has that, and then Nude can hold the mortar until he transfers it over to Wolfram here. Speaking of Nude as well, we are probably going to make him a, a Knight's Panther army. Mostly because I feel like it's got to be Knights of the Blazing Sun or Knight's Panther. First, because we don't have access to the Stubborn Bulls or the Knights of the Everlasting Light as yet. And the Knight's Panther is the biggest order of knights in the Empire, so it uh, it does make sense to build them first. The only thing that concerns me about that is this. So Speed of Horse specifies Reichsguard, specifies the Knights of the Blazing Sun, and then the Empire Knights, but does not say anything about Knight's Panther. Now, it could be that it was just the fact that uh, Knight's Panther are considered to be Empire Knights, but on the other hand, it, it might not. Do they say... No, they don't say Empire Knights, just like the Blazing su uh, Sun ones don't. Hmm. Does anybody know? Has anybody tried to apply that uh, skill point upgrade to them and seen? I guess I'll test it between, off or between the episodes off-screen, just out of curiosity. But still, he's probably going to be our Knight's Panther uh, Lord. And yeah, it'll be a while before we have a sufficient number of knights, uh, knights of more as well. So we'll keep them for now in Wolfram's army, though we may swap them out later on at some point. Anyway, that's that. Let's see what else we've got to do this turn before we end it and proceed to hopefully the destruction of Sylvania. Uh, Bernhardt, you obviously do not need to move. I'm sure that there is money to be spent, and I know that there's some here. Uh, so salt works and yes, definitely the Taylor's Guild for the extra cash, even at the cost of public order. I'm sure we'll build a public order building somewhere eventually. And then I guess we could build the salt works. A little bit expensive for what it does, though. Uh, let's just double check everything else. Zufbar, yeah, we're not going to collect income there for a while. And frankly, Blackstone Post is kind of in the same situation, at least until we build a public order building. And we could remove the fields or replace the fields with a public order building, though, potentially. Just so that it sort of pays for itself. Borlo is more or less fine, though the farm does need to be upgraded because we mostly want to upgrade this place as fast as we possibly can. And then lastly, in northern Sylvania, more growth. So really, it's just a bunch of growth buildings everywhere that we would need. But northern Sylvania is growing pretty well already at 213. In fact, it's growing better than Bordelow is by virtue of having three territories. Alright, fine. Let's upgrade Bordelow. And Zufbar and Oakenhammer. So here... We could do several things. Now, we have a pretty high amount of Vampire Corruption here, so we could build the uh, Temple of Sigmar here. But the Vampire Corruption will drop, and then there will have been no purpose to this afterwards. We could build one of these tap rooms here to counteract the negative public order. Nah, maybe we'll build a tap room here for now. This place should be reasonably safe, and we kind of need it here. And then Oakenhammer, you can build the Weaving House for now, and there we go. That's pretty much all of our money. Alrighty, and I guess with these terri with this territory being held probably by us, we may just give Grom Peak, as some people have suggested in the comments, to Grom or to Grom to Ungram Iron Fist. Maybe we can get a trade agreement or something going what? for that as well. We'll see next turn. What? Champion of the Lady. All right, well, that looks good to me. Everything else is done, so let's end the turn, and let's, well, I doubt that we can catch Vlad because this is kind of difficult to move in, but this may it's be no something to take a look at. So, get the rest of that in turn and proceed to the Massive Orcal. I'd be curious to see if we can force the, uh, the Orcs here to fight us. As in, if we siege, but don't actually build... Well, actually, no, we'll build the siege engines, but uh, maybe with this one army out here, they'd be willing. Because once again, I do feel like the AI feels like this army is weak, 
And certain units are definitely not favored by the auto resolve. I uh, in my Vlad campaign for like so many times, Black Coach Army and Ghoul Army are both uh, having a lot of trouble in terms of the auto resolve, but then winning with zero losses constantly. But anyway, Confederation offered by Middenland. All right, I was expecting Talibekland, but this actually works because we will be at 13, which means when we do Confederate Talibekland, which will be our first Confederation, we will still have Imperial Authority. Beautiful. Alrighty, the Grand Duke of Middenland rules over a land that traditionally has a strong bureaucracy. We've read this already, yes. This is the second time they've offered it, isn't it? Alright, fair enough. Assert independence. And a hey, free money from a caravan. Well, we'll certainly take that. And settlement besieged Grand Peak. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Alright, nude, that's for you, buddy. Uh, Battle Masters defeat Blorg. Who is Blorg? Blorg is this guy. Oh! A Dwarven Rebellion. Oh, wow, what the heck? Look at this. Gyrocopters and Iron Drakes out of Dwarven Rebellion. That's neat. They won't win, unfortunately, but it's still neat. And... Huh. Well, that's interesting. Skarsnik and Thorgrim switched places. I was expecting them to just kill each other, but instead Thorgrim went to World's Edge and Skarsnik took the high place. This does leave Mount Squighorn open for an attack, though. Hmm. You gotta be careful there, Thorgrim. You gotta be careful, buddy. Well, we'll see. Hopefully the situation resolves itself without too much of us uh, having to do anything. Uh, you, nude, are gonna attack this. We're gonna auto-resolve. And we are going to take the money because, I mean, there's no purpose to not doing so. Alrighty, lovely. Carl, away you go, buddy. Uh, I guess the question then is, do we leave Vlad to Wolfram? Ooh. He's getting some nice units, and there will be some decent defenses up at Karak Dromar. And you're not healing very well out here, either. Oh, and I was wondering where the extra unit damage came from. It's the assault units. Man, I should have just moved around. But the problem with that would have been Oakenhammer. It would have, uh, would have gotten damaged. Alrighty, Carl, I guess you're heading into Zifbar. In regular stance? No, in March stance. You gotta avoid additional attrition as well, even though you don't take as much attrition anymore. And are you, Nude, able to move past Zufbar into Castle Drakenhof? You are not. I'm kind of tempted to move him into Reinforce Wolfram, at least for a little bit. Though I did want to build an Empire Nightfall Wolfram. Hmm. Either way, we suffer attrition. Nah, you know what? Fine, go this way. Not like we need to hold or protect Grom Peak for now. Uh, you, Ungrim, will deal with you diplomatically in a second. It's this uh, that I wanted to see here. Is Peter, time? move in Trenches Stance and then siege the Massive Orcal. Alright, what are we looking at here? Piles upon piles of Orc Boys and Error Boys. And we are going to start building stuff. This is what we've trained for. Just in case. You can stay in trenches and just maintain that siege. Gregor, you could move up to him, but I think we're not going to. We're going to go into encamp stance. We're going to move close by. If we uh, if we attack the massive Orcal in an actual assault, then we will move Gregor in. But we don't want him so close that these guys have to fight together, because this way we might be able to draw the enemy out into a field battle. All right. That works. Recruiter, What's you are still it? here because you need to upgrade stuff. So, let's get that city watch up and running. Definitely critical right now, and let's get that weaving house. Uh, growth, eh? I think we can hold off on spending the money on that now, but let's just get the salt works. Yeah. Well, well, well. If it isn't Bellacore. Alright, well, he's coming. Probably he's coming for us, as I doubt he's gonna land at Kurun. So this means that Recruiter will probably have to do right. some recruiting. Also, you don't need that Berserker Sword. At least not right now. General. You can also... Let's see what we have here. Hmm. I'm a little bit tempted to get sure and true just for defending, but for now, nonetheless, I think we want to head you towards Headhunter. Just for the recruitment capacity and recruit rank. I guess we'll go for Quartermaster for the slight amount of time that you spend with an army. Yeah. Alrighty. And is there anything we need to build at Reichland? No, but Altdorf is going to be upgraded in two turns, so we need to have the money for when it does, as we will be building the College's Magic. 
All right. Well, you're going to go back and tail hard for now. But you need to be ready to move into uh, Marienburg. We'll see exactly where Bellicor goes. If he goes here, we're going to start building troops. And then, of course, we will send Mr. Gregor up north to gather these islands and maybe raise some scaling. Somebody did suggest taking out the scaling and then giving their stuff to the various Kislev uh, factions, which is certainly a possibility, but we will need to make him a better army. As in, there's a few units that will need to be swapped out. We'll need a few ringers here, that's for certain. At the very least, some artillery. As it's a rather weak army and was originally meant for defending... Uh, uh, defending forts, which are pretty darn strong Strike by first. themselves. Anyway, the rest of that looks good to me. Thyrus, Ready. you can keep moving towards here to reach Carl. And while we're at it, I was going to get one of you guys on the field. Uh, Defender of Men to get the extra powder. All right. Oh, you guys are costly. All right, you're on the field now. You start moving this way. What do we delete out of here? So, if we want to build a Shrine of Sigmar, and we probably do, but we can wait on it. We do want to build the Paved Roads here as well, and the Tailor's Guild. Hmm. You know, I'm tempted to delete the Gunsmith for now. It is nice to have it here, and it is nice to have access to these units, but the public order right now is pretty critical in this territory. We could l remove the land at a state, but I kind of don't want to do that either. Mm, although, Eshin, once you're upgraded to tier 3, you will be able to build wine, which will give us additional public order. Six at tier 3, which means we won't technically need this thing here. Huh, um, but deleting it right now would completely screw up our public order. I guess we could wait for the weaving house and stuff. It's not going to make that much of a difference. I'm kind of inclined to keep the gunsmith just in case we start building armies out of here, because we don't have a nearby military hub. And Sylvania could serve as one. Alright, well, for now, Ungrim. Wait, no. I want to yes. see other trade agreement Rand possibilities. Rack. No, we don't have one. Alright, so, so Ungrim is the only Clay one. Uh, Lorlorn, anybody else? Ah, we got a quest, at least. At least we got something. Ally missions? Kill Vlad. Kill Ikit. And, ooh, hello, Ikit. Well, well, well. And you're moving northward, are you? Isn't that nice? And the question is, will we be able to kill you? And by will we, I mean before Durthu or Orion get to you. You know what, let's go with Vlad. It just feels like the safer option. Yeah. Alrighty. This is now set up. Let's just double check anything else. While we don't have money, we just have Ungrim's... I am Iron Fist. New so settlement, which was Grand Peak. 26.5, not bad. He's willing to go into straight-up defensive alliance for this. I don't think we need to go military, at least not right now. He'll offer it to us himself. And this will help us out. Yeah, Alright, let's do this. Or wait, actually, 1,200 money. If we say, don't say defensive alliance, he'd be willing to give us 5k. Quite a bit. Hmm... Because I feel like he'll eventually offer us the Defensive Alliance anyway. Though it may have value right now in case other factions declare war on us in the uh, near future. We're already at war with the Slaves of Tsar. What's on our borders? Where could we possibly get attacked by somebody who's not currently attacking us? Uh, the Disciples of the Maw are a possibility. Basically, any of the Norsecan factions are a possibility. The Ecstatic Legions and all of this stuff, but we're going to head an army up there anyway to see them off. Now, you know what? I think the earlier defensive alliance is probably better, even at the cost of about 4,000 gold. Sure there you go. You can have Grand Peak, buddy. Build your stuff up there. And by the looks of it, yeah, his uh, his willingness Welcome to give us our military my... alliance is pretty early. As in, we're going to have it in the next few turns, so... Nah, nah, not a big deal. Next up, we got a little bit of money now. So, we could build something like the Iron Mine at Mon Fa. Why not? And that's all the money we have now. Alright, let's skip the rest of this and let's see... Ooh... This will give us another battle wizard. Very nice. Uh, these two both need battle wizards. You need a battle wizard. We also need a battle wizard to generate uh, tech thievery. So basically we need lots and lots of battle wizards. 
both the Colleges of Magic and the Research will help with that. Uh, let's see if the Mass of Orcal decides to sally out and fight Peter in the field. I'm hoping that it does. Yes, it does. Alrighty. You gotta love it when the AI thinks that your army is weaker than it is. I mean, once again, it's a double-edged sword because sometimes you want to be able to auto-resolve, but in this particular case, this certainly works out. We do have to watch out for the massive pile of boar boys that they have here. Uh, yeah, they got six from the garrison and then two in the non-garrison as well. So it's certainly something to be concerned about. They can certainly move fairly fast as well, so backing off probably won't give us too much value. Nonetheless, here we go. We must be triumphant! Alright, we certainly must, but whether we will, it remains a question. This should be a pretty interesting battle, also by the looks of it, because we're in the Mass of Orcal, the enemy gets to summon a bunch of free units. I, uh, I should have checked their abilities, because I didn't realize that they could do this and get all these units for free. It's going to make this battle considerably harder, on top of the fact that we are probably facing a type of army that we want to face the least with the massive piles of Cavalry, obviously not a good thing to face with a uh, infantry fire while moving army. They're gonna have trouble. Um, but nonetheless, we're gonna give it a try. We do have a fairly decent position up on top of the hill, at least for a standard sort of defense. And I guess in, the part in this particular situation, since we can't run from the cavalry, we may as well hold the hill and try to hold that ground. Obviously, we've also got the pistoliers and the war wagons in there. Work has got to be cut out for them, as they have so much stuff that they need to try to peel away from the main army and damage. Ideally, the more units of boar boys they kill, the less units of boar boys we will have to deal with as we uh, actually fight. Alright, it looks like this one unit is already in very bad shape, but it's taken quite a while to knock them down, I'll grant. But we're getting there. Oh, let's just double check here. Yeah, this one is pretty much done. They're shaken and they won't be around for much longer. Looks like the enemy is giving something of a chase to our war wagons as well and are looking to try to head them off slash intercept them with the more units of war boys. Um, the, uh, the war wagons do seem to be far better against units that are low in model camps, so sniping trolls and lords and heroes and all that, but for now, uh, they can use their mass in order to hold the, uh, hold the boar boys in place after said boar boys charge, and here they come, they will catch up to the war wagons, though they will continue to take fire as they do, and damn, that's a lot of cavalry. And there we go, just gonna stop in place for a little bit here, maybe a little bit further, though. Our free company militia can fire now, we just want to make sure that the enemy doesn't directly charge the free company, so much as it does the war wagons with their much higher HP. Alright, looks good to me. The hunters are dishing out the damage. One of the enemy units of war boys is pretty much done for, and the other one is at about half of the HP that they started with. We're also going to charge the other unit of war wagons right back in to try to hold uh, the second unit of war boys back. It's the cavalry that threatens us the most, so we're going to try to destroy them as best we can before the infantry get here. Now, let's take a look at what the pistoliers are doing. Looks like they have managed to peel away a few units here, and a decent amount of units are following the other units of Pistoliers, though I do imagine they will give up, especially as the Pistoliers continue to peel away, being chased by the Boar Boys as they are. Alright, Huntsman, get to work. There we go. I like the overlapping sort of fire we've got, the uh, hunters firing from on high, and then the pistoliers firing forward, not the pistoliers, the uh, free company fired forward and to the sides as well. Does work quite well. Now that said, here come some much scarier units. Trolls and black orcs are, mm, are going to move into the fray, and black orcs are, let's just say, not something that a free company unit is going to be able to hold. Honestly, even the trolls are kind of iffy, though at least there we have a decent amount of war wagons and sniping via our anti-large hunters to rely upon. Hopefully we can get the trolls to rush away and not continue to apply their splash damage. 
And though at the very least, our first unit of free company is in trouble, and there's not a lot it can do to hold against this. We still have quite a few units firing, though. As long as the enemy is held back here for at least a few seconds, or maybe a, ideally a few minutes, we can dish out an insane amount of damage before the uh, um, before the free company actually erupts. We also do still have a fairly good position with all this uh, bonus elevation, even if this isn't ideal for this army in particular. All right, summon hand gunners, keep working. And our lord is just <laughs> he's just standing there. Come on, fire, man. There we go. And finally he's firing. Oh, he's gonna uh, pop that oil cast on the enemy Black Orcs, and maybe we can try to set them ablaze with an arrow of Akshi as well, or at least we wanted to, but unfortunately the enemy Lord decided to charge in. This may not be such a great thing for the enemy Lord, however, he may be able to uh, kill our Huntsman General in melee, but he's far, far too close to these handgunners. Otherwise, we are still holding the enemy back, though the balance of power remains in their favor. Damn those extra unit spawns that the enemy gets, and we are still peeling away a decent amount of enemy units here and a couple of orc error boys these boar boys are very much in trouble and getting ripped apart by these pistoliers who are once again showing their value for a tier one unit a very nice both the pistoliers and the handgunners I feel like this army does pretty darn good. It's also probably one of the more fun armies to play. It's a little bit micro-intensive, especially when you have to move the infantry, not just the uh, not just the pistoliers and the war wagons. There's that arrow of Akshi coming down. Doesn't look like it killed all that many of those black orcs, though. Uh, but yeah, I feel like this army does really good for the tier of the units as that are in it. They're relatively cheap, all of them. And it makes me tempted to build another one, at least temporarily, just to uh, sack some stuff. Though, at the end of the day, if we build a bunch of knight armies, we can at least reduce their upkeep pretty significantly as well. Because of the thing, the uh, reduction on upkeep that the uh, lords of the uh, knights have. Anyway... Let's see the Grand Masters, I mean. Let's see, the enemy lord is out having taken a few volleys from the handgunners here. We are still holding the ground, though it is starting to get a little bit tough. Some of our pistoliers have also taken a little bit of damage, though they are still winning against the boar boys in the background. We have very few of the free company militia that are still able to fight in melee, at least on the main portion. And uh, there are still a couple of them that have decent HP from the flanks where the boar boys kind of failed. Uh, but there are units of trolls that are moving deeper into our battle lines. We are going to back off and continue to fire on them, and let's hope that we can bring them down with the Hunters without needing any uh, free company or any other unit to stop them in their tracks. A few more shots into them, come on. Alright, now the enemy have reached our summoned unit of handgunners. Of course, we don't care that much about them, at least in the sense of we don't care about their losses, though their ability to apply damage is still quite valuable, as they did a number on the enemy lord. That said, if they hold the ground and allow us to kill these black orcs, that would be just swell. Speaking of the Black Orcs, they're down to about half HP, a little bit lower in fact, and are being fired upon by a couple of units of Hunters, as well as our Lord and our War Wagons. Bounce power remains in the enemy's favor, and I do think that the battle is still fairly even. There's still a lot of enemy units that are full HP and on the field, but there is a sort of critical mass that they need to actually attack us. And once they lose that, and they're just going to fail, so you just need to hold on a little bit longer. Alrighty, handgunners look like they're about to rout the Black Orcs, absolutely ripping them apart, but getting, getting uh, ripped apart in turn. And let's see, the enemy Black Orc big boss is down as well. The Black Orcs are about to rout with their big boss, getting a few more shots from those war wagons into the Black Orcs, and a little bit of charges, and there we go. Finally, those Black Orcs are out. There are still a few Biggins and other units moving in, but we do have a few of our Free Companies rallying. Another great thing about Free Companies, even once they've rallied, or once they've routed, rather, they can back off and then start functioning as a purely ranged unit, rather than a melee hybrid unit, and can still add to the battle. 
Whereas if they were a unit of swordsmen or something like that, okay, you guys probably should have run, but uh, if they were a unit of swordsmen and they had like 15 units left, they wouldn't be able to contribute any further. All right, a few free companies still fighting in the middle of this blob, though they are very much overrun by the sheer number of orc boys here. I love the war wagons on top of the hills firing down into everybody. Which was some nice shots. Do I take it these are... huh. What was the damage on these guns again? They're not regular handgunners up here. And on the iron sides, maybe 375. I want to compare them to a few of our other handgunner units just to compare the damage. It's pretty good. Anyway, with that and the running away of the Black Orcs and most of the enemy melee lines, granted there are still a few ranged units to take care of and a few more units running around in the background, the balance of power shifts towards our favor a little bit and is now about even. We still have ammunition, but we are now starting to run out despite the fact that we've been using our... Uh, uh, our restock ability. I'm down to about half on uh, half or lower on the Huntsman at the very least. The free companies still have their ammunition, but that's probably because, well, uh, they've been in melee quite a bit in this particular battle. Now these enemies are trying to run away from the uh, uh, from the center of the enemy formation, and we're going to give chase with our free company and continue to fire on them, and just so that they don't rally. Battle's not over, however, as more enemy units continue to converge upon this hill, uh, though now we can focus the enemy a little bit more, and together the war wagons and the huntsmen, or hunters rather, should be able to rip, huntsmen it is, uh, should be able to rip the archers apart without too much trouble. As long as the enemy has a little enough melee units and we keep them routing, and they won't have the mass needed to overcome our range superiority at this point. Mounts of power continue shifting in our favor. The pistoliers still running around in the background and are also very low in ammo. In fact, this one's completely run out, and this one nearly has. But they should be able to keep those black orcs, at the very least, from coming back. Now, these ones have been just doing an absolutely fantastic job chasing around boar boys for this entire battle. 86 kills purely of boar boys and 20k damage. Very impressive. And it looks like with that, the enemy deems it no longer possible to win. We continue to move forward with our archer, or with our huntsman rather, and our free company, and just chase down and apply the rest of our ammunition to the enemy runners. Lovely. Well done. Looks like another win for Peter. He did a pretty good job, though that said, we certainly took some damage ourselves. A lot of our units, in particular our Free Company Militia, our Huntsmen are by and large completely fine, and because our Free Company Militia took the hits for them. Mm, but uh, yeah, certainly quite a bit of damage there. But it certainly shows what we can do, especially once the Free Company are upgraded to Nordland Mariners as well, and after they gain some more ranks and buffs in addition to that. Is gonna get a few more shots of these biggins getting ripped apart by the remaining Huntsman's ammunition. And then we'll speed it up. Really fun battle though, man. I really love playing this army, and I wasn't expecting to. Like, I didn't set out to build this army, it just kind of sort of happened organically, and I uh, ended up really enjoying it. We'll see how it improves once we get a bunch of the uh, regiments of Renown, or not regiments of Renown, the uh, uh, state troops in addition to that witch hunter to help everybody out as well. Anyway, with that we're going to speed it up, obviously with everybody firing while moving we're going to chase as best we can. I think one of the enemy units of Black Orcs that was peeled away by the Pistoliers unfortunately is basically fully alive, but they ran off the field pretty much immediately, so not much we can do about that. Ooh, you gotta be careful there, uh, war wagons. Gonna knock out some of our own units like that. Hey, it's gonna certainly taken a while to kill those orc error boys. And they're probably just, yeah, the problem is the mass. It's forcing them to knock down units and they have a, uh, a few seconds of invincibility, which I guess is the problem here. But oh well, not a big deal. Our own losses were about half, a little bit less than half of our army, so the game does give us a Pyrrhic victory. And fair enough, considering the damage on our uh, free companies, although it doesn't look like we actually lost any units. And I do absolutely love the fact that they can continue to contribute to the fight, even after routing, and by rallying and firing into the enemy.
Ooh, alrighty, our three companies were certainly in a little bit more trouble this time around than the previous battle. I guess kill holding isn't quite as much their forte as uh, just uh, fighting across an open field and having the ability to move back and uh, fire while moving. Um, but again, we were up against an army that just had an absolute ton of cavalry, which is the bane of this army, which is going to be much better at dealing with enemy infantry armies. Still, it wasn't too bad. We got ourselves a little bit of cash, which I guess we'll take, and the enemy army is pretty heavily damaged. I do wonder whether we'll be able to auto-resolve the, uh, uh, the following battle, and even if we can't, we can just send Gregor to deal with it if our army is too badly damaged, which we'll see in a second. If we heal a little bit from the siege as well. Uh, the migration. A great migration comes to our borders, demanding shelter from larger threats abroad. Do we let them cross into our territory or turn them away? So, three turns of extra little bit of growth and a little bit of recruitment at cost of control. Well, the growth is nice, but 15 isn't really all that much, and minus 9 controls could be pretty significant for a few of our territories that have negative control right now. So I think we're going to do nothing for now. Alrighty, and it's Sterling up now. <laughs> Where is Talibeklan? Well, I can't complain about the bonus Imperial Authority, but still. Let's see what Sterling has to say. Historically, Sterling had the ignominy of sharing terrain with the realm of the vampires in its easternmost areas. Despite this, its capital, Wurtbad, is known as the wine capital of the Empire, since Sterling's highest quality wines are sold there, attracting traders from all across the Empire. There was no wall in there, but I said it anyway. Assert independence, one more Imperial Authority. Hopefully Talibek land is next. Uh, Entertainer control for province, that's great. Gotrick and Felix, the traveling adventurers. A recent conversation in the local tavern has been centered around a pair of powerful mercenaries rumored to be traveling through nearby provinces. The famous dwarf slayer known as Gotrick Gernison and his human companion and chronicler Felix Jaeger. Some in the Empire consider Gotrick and Felix to be outlaws, but the duo are known to have slain some of the most insurmountable adversaries known to the forces of order. Should they be persuaded to join your cause, they would be truly formidable allies. And there we go, that tech research, so we now have additional capacity for both Empire Captains and, more importantly, Battle Wizards. Uh, as for Gotrick and Felix, I don't remember how to get them. I think, is it a quest? Maybe it's a quest that we have to do at some point. Do they still disappear within a few turns? I always find it kind of pointless to use them originally when they uh, when they became available, because if they're going to disappear anyway, why take XP from your stuff? As in from your viable armies, or that are going to stick around. Also, I don't see Bellacor. We do have Vision of the Water here, but hmm, I do have to wonder where he went. I figured he was coming here, but I... Hmm. I don't want to waste extra money on recruiting stuff with Recruiter Force while uh, while that's happening, especially since next turn we are going to going to cancel the Burgomeisters because we'll be building uh, the Colleges of Magic. And another thing here. I am not yet sure which thing it'll be. Uh, toll gates have a pretty decent, are a pretty decent option, but if we build the Temple of Sigmar here right now, we will be able to go all the way up to tier 4 and thus get our Sigmarite Disciples and then start building up the uh, uh, our Sigmarite Force, which I do want to get on the field as well. We definitely do want to get the Toll Gates maxed out pretty much everywhere, though. The tier 2 doubles up on certain things, including income from all buildings doubled up, which would be great in Altdorf, which generates a lot of our cash right now. But yeah, we're going to need a lot of money. We need the Foundry upgraded, we need the Menagerie upgraded, possibly the Temple of Sigmar, and the Colleges of Magic. Alright, so we got to be careful about not overspending in this particular turn. Anyway, Carl, and more importantly, you, Wolfram, what are you doing here? Kirik Hearn. Vlad has march stanced all the way to Kirik Dromar. Man, it's going to take ages to reach this. I'm almost tempted to take a turn of attrition just so that we can get up a little bit closer. But what if Vlad raises like a dozen uh, zombies and attacks us? We'll be in trouble. Let's just keep moving. Damn their agents, though. 
Hmm, we do want to fight before Isabella joins the army as well. Uh, Nude, you are going to suffer another turn of attrition, in which you're going to follow along. We're, we're going to leave Carl to do his own thing. We're going to hope that we can handle Carrick Dromar and allow Carl to go north instead and start retaking Ostermark. And possibly fighting Azag a little bit as well. And oh, hello! And they've taken Nashrak's lair. And while that ain't great... Uh, huh. Ungrim, you better not fail to hold these territories after we gave that uh, that settlement to you. You just lost a tier 3 settlement. But we're still probably going to be better off moving around. And A, there's no more attrition here. Lovely. Which means we can heal as we move. Go, Carl, go. And Marcus Huss, you have a long way to travel, my friend, to join our other army. Also gold, yes, definitely. Other stuff we may not necessarily want to spend money on, but gold is most definitely an exception. Uh, public order here is still too problematic, but the vampire corruption will go down once Carrick Dromar falls. More importantly, you guys. Move to the massive Orcal. And let's see what we got here. Decisive victory, low casualties, and we lose one free company militia if we do it. On the other hand, for. what if we do this? If we swap the free company militia around, like this one and this one are the most hurt, with you and you, and in fact you're actually at a lower level, and you are hurt, do this. I don't know if this will work or not. Now if we do this, ah, they still die, damn. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Uh, hmm. I really don't want to deal with it. Forward to victory. Especially considering that the enemy has absolutely no chance, but I also don't want to waste a turn sieging. How much does it cost to recruit a single free company? With you, they're basically free. 208 money. I guess it'll just be a loss of veterancy in that particular case. Alrighty, fine. I guess we do that then. A shame though it may be. I mean, I guess we do need to replace these with the Nordland Mariners anyway, but it's going to take a while to get them, so we'll still need to replace it. Yeah, yeah just do it. And just do it regardless of the loss of the one free company. Strike first. Strike Not a big fast. deal. And occupy the place. Ooh, sack it for 3k. Nah, Play still occupied. We're probably not going to hold on to it, and we got a student. Probably not going to continue occupying it. Faction destroyed Broken Hunt Axe, which is lovely. We got a Gunsmith and a Tier 3 Tailor's Guild right away, though. Huh. That ain't so bad. Now, we don't really need the Gunsmith here, so we will delete that. I take it we can't build anything special here. Hmm. Now, here's a question. If we get the paved roads here, as in... I think they won't apply to this place. I think they will not apply to anything that's above it. it. Adjacent only counts via paths. It doesn't count over the mountain. I feel like I tested that at some point long, long ago. But I'm not 100% on it. Either way, Your Gregor, you are going to move out back into our allies' territory, begins. and you're going north towards these islands while we head south with you. I just want to double check that it can't reach us here. No, he can't. I wonder what he's gonna do. He's moving closer. Hopefully he doesn't go for Montfoc while we're busy, but I'm reasonably sure that our army shouldn't have too much trouble with him. Anyway, that looks good to me. Let's see what else we gotta do. Thyrus, you keep moving. You got Carl to meet up north. In fact, move up even more north, because you're out of the way a little bit. And everybody else is fine. Recruiter, you're not gonna recruit, I guess. We got two more turns on Imperial Foot, though. We got to keep an eye on that. And oh, also, we should probably upgrade this, even if, General. yeah, regardless of the cost, like so. We're gonna hold off on you because we need to save money, though. And let's do diplomacy. Then let's end the turn. Let's start on those colleges of magic. Ooh, actually. Oh, we can't build battle wizards here, right? We need to actually build the. Uh, build the thing, but that's fine. We're going to start it up shortly. We need to then go for Engineer's Guild into Continuous Production, and then we'll go into Utilize Apprentice Wizards, uh, Wizard Apprentices, rather, right after that. 
And then probably back towards at least a few of the military techs, namely ammunition, since we did start to run out, even with the war wagons helping us out in that particular battle. Alright, diplomacy. Who calls? Mortar princes, no. Ivress, surprisingly. St oh, wow, Ivress is fighting Yetain. And Avalorn. What are you doing, Altharian? How did you how did that happen? Huh. I thought they were usually all friends against Nikari. Shame for them. But, oh well. Alrighty, let's end one more turn. I really just want to confederate Talbekla. <laughs> uh, outpost upgrade available with Karazakarak. We will, ooh. You know what? Let's double check what we're at in terms of... Nah, we're still okay in terms of allegiance. Actually, speaking of allegiance, ooh, we do have Ice Guard available now. And we have heavy war sluts. Ooh, yes. All right. That is something we definitely want on the field reasonably soon. And at a Karazakarak... Uh, nothing interesting. I wanted the Grudge Rakers. And we still need to try to find Cathay, but they will come here with a caravan eventually. Alrighty, well, I guess that's nothing. Or it's outpost available with who? Kurun? Did I forget to build you? 2,000 gold. Mmm. I just build it. We should still have enough. It's expensive, but we still should. Alrighty, now we can end the turn. Wait, another outpost available. Oh, it's Karakadrin. Yeah, no, 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 we don't need that right now. Who knows if they even survive. And a massive war, Cal, you can for now go for state troop levy, because these guys need to leave the army. The you calls. can actually go into regular stance as well. And now, now we're finally ready to end the turn. Alright, Talabeklan, come on, moment of truth. Let's expand our borders. And join Morgan Strike us soon, soon. Carl is coming, don't you, don't you worry. He's almost there. Watch Vladdy attack Wolf from here. Just so that we can't see the end turn. Vlad, nope. Alright, he didn't attack. Hopefully you didn't succeed. And I don't know where Isabella's going. But it looks like nobody else is going to be attacking us, which means we're good. The Broken Axe have fallen. Positive growth, hey, lovely. And yes, this is what we were waiting for. We've already read this about the Knights of the Blazing Sun and Mermidia, the Goddess of War. Let us not assert independence, but accept the Confederation of Talabekline. We're currently at 5k per turn. This puts us to... 6.2k, but that's probably with an extra army, or actually two extra armies that we don't need. Wait, is Helmut dead? I mean, he should be immortal, but, uh... Huh, I don't see him here. I guess he's wounded. Interesting. Lord, recruit rank, and general of the Empire? Yeah, he is dead. And he has Imperial Calibration. Hmm. I was gonna make him the user of the Knights of the Blazing Sun, but it quarry? might not be all that worth it. Oh, look, we have another Witch Hunter. What do you have? Imperious Leadership one and... Oh, this is kind of terrible. And But oh well, we got some great swords, we got some halberdiers, we got a tiny little army here, but we'll probably need to uh, deal with that. What do we have here? Lots of tailors, guilds, and weaving houses. Very nice. In fact, we can put you back up to Imperial Taxation immediately. And we probably don't really need the armory here. We can keep the tavern for now because of the public order. And we are able to build the Knights of the Blazing Sun here. What about the special building? Oh, it's a tier 4. Unit capacity plus 2 for order knights and defensive supplies. And public order, both of which are pretty okay. Alrighty, well, we will figure out what to do and do the D, uh, the uh, admin with regards to the new province next time. At least it did bump up our money and... We're going to start building the Colleges of Magic as well. Or Conclave of Battle Wizards until it becomes Conclave of Battle... Uh, until the Conclave becomes the Colleges. That's what I was going for. Alrighty, well with that, unfortunately we are out of time. Our empire has suddenly grown. And on top of that, Sylvania is very, very close to uh, uh, sharing a border with Talabeklan. So as soon as we get Sterland, we will be able to get these guys... Or our entire empire, such as it is. To have a contiguous border. Also, while we're there, uh, we want to double-check Elector Counts. So, we have two new Elector Counts that are able to be on the field. Uh, you are going to briefly, for now, Elector Count of Hawkland, you have an increase to range and reload time reduction. 
So we're definitely gonna put Peter for this for now. Not necessarily gonna keep him there, but I think right. this is a good option as it'll power up his army significantly. The other one gives us Sutsun's guns and let's see what it does directly. Fire resistance and nothing specific. Income from industry, all regions faction wide is nice. Oh, that'll give us even more money. Who do we do with this? I mean, let's put Gregor there for now, but I think we'll just put Helmet here once he's back up. I mean, I, actually, we could put him up to this right now. Hmm, Stonebreaker, melee attack plus 50, imbuement, sundered armor, unstoppable charge. The thing is, he's not a Grand Master, so he won't get the power-ups for the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Hmm, you know what? Let's, let's just keep him just keep him here for now. As in, put Gregor to this, because he can make use of it, then we can swap that out later. Yeah. Alright, now with that, our money is up to 6.8k. Very, very nice. And on that a very positive note, I am going to call it here. We will hopefully continue using our money to build up our empire further. And, oh, hello, Bellacore. Alright, well, he's been sighted, so I guess we do need to move to Marienburg with a few recruits and next turn. But anyway, that will be something we leave to next time. And honestly, if he goes for Krung Zint, that would just be fine. Uh, we will also have to probably head him off with some of these armies there, but I'd really love a battle with Belacor and to get the Bell of the Ball title on one of our lords. Also, we will probably be destroying Vlad for good next episode, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.